The movie opens up in an elementary school, where a teacher asks her students about their dad's profession. One of them says that her father is a doctor, while another says he's a truck driver. However, when it's little Max's turn, he reveals that his father is a liar. Following this, the movie cuts to a few hours later, where we see Max waiting for his dad, Fletcher, to arrive. He was supposed to come at 4 p.m., but it's already 6 and there's no sign of him. Even Max's mom, Audrey, has grown tired of his behavior. However, just as the mother-son duo is about to give up, Fletcher arrives in his fancy car and starts making excuses. He says that he was stuck in an important meeting with his boss. The innocent Max believes it right away and hugs his dad tightly. With this show of affection, it appears that the three are a normal family. Family. But suddenly, a guy shows up out of nowhere and kisses Audrey. It is then revealed that Fletcher and Audrey got divorced some months back, and the latter is currently dating the guy named Jerry. Fletcher only visits the family so he can spend time with his son. In the next scene, we get to know a bit more about this Fletcher guy. Being a seasoned lawyer, he is accustomed to lying in court all the time. However, Fletcher has lied so much that the disease has shifted to his personal life as well. Even if it is a simple question, Fletcher will lie and make it more dramatic. Currently, he has brought his son on the pretext of taking him to a wrestling match, but Fletcher takes Max to his workplace instead, saying he has some unfinished work. The biggest wrestling-related upset since Logan Paul joined the fray. The poor boy, who clearly knows that he isn't going to watch any wrestling today, doesn't say a word. The most precious thing for him is to spend time with his dad. Later, as Fletcher makes his way towards his office, he gives fake compliments to all the colleagues he meets. For instance, when a woman with a ridiculous hair style approaches him, he tells her that she looks fantastic. Fletcher even tells an extremely obese man that he's looking slim today. After a while, his assistant Greta secretly tells him that it's his son's birthday tomorrow. Being the absent-minded dad that he is, Fletcher completely forgot about it and starts panicking. However, Greta brings forward a package and calms him down, saying she has already taken care of Max's present. Finally, we are introduced to Fletcher's boss, Miranda. She is a cunning woman who only wants one thing in life, to have coitus. Miranda often forces Fletcher to come to her house and do it with her, promising that she'll promote him. However, she always eats up her words as soon as they finish. That night, when the clock hits 12, Fletcher hands his son the present, and it turns out to be baseball gloves. But despite the attractive gift, Max is unhappy, as his dad doesn't have time to play with him. In response, Fletcher promises to come to his birthday party. The next morning, a new client named Samantha arrives at Fletcher's law firm. She is revealed to be a gold digger, who is looking to divorce her husband and get 50% of his wealth. The only problem is that Samantha has had an open affair with another guy. This means that she is the reason behind the divorce, and winning the case would be nearly impossible. However, Fletcher, with his cunning lies as usual, assures Samantha that she can win the case. He even suggests that she fight for her children's custody, because if she wins, she'll get an even bigger settlement than 50%. As expected, Samantha likes the idea and agrees right away. After the meeting ends, an impressed Miranda approaches approaches Fletcher and forcefully kisses him. She then invites him to her house that night, saying she will have the promotion papers ready. The movie then cuts to Max's birthday party, where a clown is seen entertaining the audience. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves, except for Max. He is upset that his father has not shown up. When Audrey learns of this, she immediately calls Fletcher and explains that their son is missing him a lot. However, the crazy lawyer is in the middle of a romantic session with his boss. As usual, he lies that he can't make it because he is busy with work. Could have just told the truth. He's actually busy with Henriette Weinstein. Later, as it is time to blow out the birthday candles, Max makes an unexpected wish. He is tired of his dad's lies, so he wants God to make sure Fletcher cannot lie again. Although the innocent boy says it out of superstitious hope, God actually listens to him and fulfills his wish. In the morning, when Fletcher wakes up with Miranda, he surprisingly cannot stop himself from insulting her. When the boss inquires how he felt last night, Fletcher honestly says that she doesn't have the stamina like she used to. This angers Miranda and she kicks him out of the house. Later, as Fletcher leaves his apartment, he meets a beautiful lady on the elevator. The two initiate a conversation and the girl says that she is very popular in the building. Impressed, Fletcher tries to compliment her looks, but ends up saying that she's popular because of her chest. He also expresses his desire to grab them right now. Mama. <laughs> 
I love that scene. As expected, this angers the lady, and she slaps him tightly. Following this, Fletcher heads to the courtroom to defend Samantha. A lot of serious people are in attendance, implying that the case is a high-profile one. Soon, Samantha's husband Richard and his lawyer approach Fletcher and warn him that he will lose the case. The lawyer explains that they have incriminating evidence of Samantha having an extramarital affair, so the case is totally in their favor. Fletcher tries to argue by making up a lie, but fails miserably. No matter how hard he tries, he just can't speak what he wants to. After a while, the judge enters the court, and the atmosphere becomes tense. Fletcher, realizing that he is in no condition to take on the case, requests to postpone the prosecution, but the judge declines. So, during the break, he rushes back to his office to recuperate. At this point, Fletcher is confused about what's happening to him. Every time he tries to fabricate a lie, he ends up saying his inner thoughts. On a normal day, he would falsely compliment all his colleagues, but today, he blatantly makes fun of their appearances. Fletcher tells the crazy-haired woman from earlier that she should become bald, while the obese guy is told that he will soon die of a heart attack. Panicked, Fletcher locks himself in his room and grabs a blue pen. He tries to say that it is a red pen, but the words just won't come out. He ends up saying the pen is blue. After a while, Fletcher realizes that he had promised to pick up Max from school, so he quickly calls Audrey and tells her that he is busy with work. In response, the latter mentions that she already knew he wouldn't come. She then inquires what he was doing last night, and despite Fletcher trying his best to make up a lie, he ends up revealing that he was banging his boss. He then breaks the telephone and starts screaming. On the other hand, Max sadly asks his mom if he is not a good boy. No matter how hard he tries to be with his dad, Fletcher just won't pay him any attention. He also reveals that last night, he wished his dad would only say the truth from now on. However, he is not sure if the wish worked. Hearing all this, Audrey comforts him, saying his dad is just busy these days, and that he will surely come around. In the next scene, Fletcher repairs his broken telephone and calls Audrey once again. He frantically says that something is happening to him, because of which he cannot control himself. However, Audrey, who is fed up with Fletcher disappointing their son time and time again, reveals that she's moving to Boston with her boyfriend and Max. The revelation worries Fletcher, so he disconnects the call and rushes to Audrey's home. But unfortunately, along the way, he is pulled over for speeding. Fletcher, as usual, tries to make up a lie, but ends up landing himself in hot water. He inadvertently blurts out how he has never paid any fines, despite being warned by the authorities many times. Later, Fletcher is asked to pay $1,600 as outstanding fines, which have been accumulated over a period of 20 years. Adjusted for today's inflation, that's $6 billion. But since he doesn't have that kind of cash on him, he calls Audrey for help. Once she arrives and gets him out, Fletcher pleads with her to stay, saying he cannot afford to lose his son. He asserts that in this chaotic life that he's living, Max is the only good thing he has. As he continues to plead, Audrey becomes emotional and agrees. But she warns him that if he doesn't visit Max in the evening, she will definitely catch a flight to Boston the next morning. She also reveals how much the little boy loves him. Last night, he made a wish, asking God to make sure his father never lies again. Hearing this, Fletcher is taken aback, and he finally realizes why all this is happening to him. So, without wasting any time, he heads to his son's school and takes him out in the middle of his classes. Fletcher then buys a cake for him and asks him to reverse yesterday's wish. The innocent boy complies without any questions, but once he's done, he says that it didn't work. Max further reveals that last night he made the wish with an honest heart, as he really wanted to stop his dad from lying. But now, he can't do the same. Frustrated, Fletcher returns to his office and confides in his assistant Greta about everything that has been happening today. The latter thinks that he is joking, so she tests him by asking a trick question. Unfortunately, Fletcher, who cannot say a lie, makes insensitive jokes about her, causing her to storm off in anger. Fletcher's problems continue to mount as Miranda overhears his conversation and learns about his condition. To put him in a tough spot, she takes him to the conference room where the higher-ups are currently having a meeting. Miranda knows that Fletcher will make fun of them, and to her delight, he does just that. Fletcher targets the CEO and calls him out for always farting. He even calls him a big fat loser. This silences the entire room for a while, but then everyone starts laughing. Surprisingly, the CEO finds the joke very funny, and he thanks Fletcher for making his day. 
don't try that one in real life. In the next scene, the court resumes the prosecution, and all the participants take their positions. The first one to go is Richard's lawyer. She brings forward a tape and plays it, and to everyone's disgust, it is the audio of Samantha having a vigorous coitus with her lover. Fletcher tries to counter it with his usual tactics, but of course, he only makes the situation worse. When nothing works, he drinks a lot of water and asks for a washroom break. There, Fletcher gets a strange idea and starts beating himself mercilessly. A while later, a guard escorts him into the courtroom in a bruised and battered state. He has made it look like someone has assaulted him. However, when the judge asks if he can continue, Fletcher truthfully says yes, even though he wanted to say the opposite. This impresses the judge, and he applauds Fletcher for being a determined lawyer. And as a reward, he adjourns the prosecution for 15 minutes. During the break, Fletcher calls his son and reassures him that he will make it tonight. He also mentions how much Max means to him, and the latter reciprocates the love. After talking to his son, Fletcher feels reinvigorated and energized, and as he is about to re-enter the courtroom, he runs into Samantha and her actual lover, Kenneth. The three discuss for a while and decide to use Kenneth as a witness to clarify everything. Following this, the prosecution resumes, and when it's Fletcher's turn, he orders Kenneth to be his witness. However, since he cannot lie, he starts asking irrelevant questions to his own witness, putting him in a tough situation. When Kenneth has had enough, he bursts out in anger and reveals that he did sleep with Samantha. Looks like Richard's not the only dick in Samantha's life. This revelation stuns the entire higher courtroom, and the judge declares the case in Richard's favor. But, surprisingly, there is still one more twist left in the case. As Fletcher goes to his seat and puts his head down, his eyes catch the attention of a document. The document enlists all of Samantha's personal details, including her age, weight, and complexity. Fletcher, being a talented lawyer, immediately digs upon the information and reveals that Samantha has actually reduced her actual age. When she got married, she was only 17, aka a minor. In the state of California, a minor cannot sign a legal document, including a prenuptial agreement. This means that Richard broke the rules while marrying her. And so, he is the culprit here. The information stuns the entire room, and the judge also reverses his decision. Against all odds, Samantha has won the case and has been rewarded with 50% of Richard's fortune. This elates Fletcher and his team, as they have won a near impossible case in the most dire of circumstances. However, the gold digger Samantha is still not done. As told by Fletcher earlier, she demands custody of her children because it will grant her more wealth. Unfortunately for Richard, the judge agrees to this as well, and he is forced to give up 75% of his wealth. Richard cries and pleads, saying he cannot live without his children. But the decision stands firm. When Fletcher witnesses the emotional sight, he finally understands the true meaning of parenthood. He regrets having neglected his son all his life, despite the latter always longing for him. So, he makes a promise to never ignore Max again. Fletcher also tries to plead with the judge to return Richard's kids to him. He claims he broke the entire system and told a lot of lies. Unfortunately, the judge finds this offensive, and Fletcher is taken into custody. In the police station, Fletcher calls Audrey to bail him out, but she berates him for not fulfilling his promise yet again. He didn't visit Max, even though he assured him that he would. Audrey then reveals that they are on their way to the airport and hangs up the call. The news devastates Fletcher, and he finally accepts his situation. But as he is waiting in his prison cell, someone bails him out. It is none other than his caring assistant, Greta. She even encourages him to go after his son saying it's now or never. Taking her advice, Fletcher gets into his car and speeds his way to the airport. Unfortunately, despite his efforts, he learns that the passengers have already boarded the plane. Currently, it is about to take off. In an act of desperation, the resilient Fletcher hijacks a mobile staircase and goes after the plane. He then throws one of his shoes at it, causing the pilot to abort the takeoff. The plan is successful and the flight is cancelled, but Fletcher loses his balance and ends up crashing. Later, as he is being stretchered off, Max approaches him delightfully. The to chat for a while and Fletcher, with tears in his eyes, promises to be by his son's side forever. Seeing them so close, Jerry and Audrey also decide to cancel their plans for Boston. Following this, the movie cuts to one year later, and we see Audrey and Fletcher together. They are currently celebrating their son's ninth birthday. Just like the previous instance, Max closes his eyes and asks for a wish, and when he opens them, he sees his parents making out. Fletcher jokingly asks if he wished for them to be together, but Max replies that he just wanted a pair a pair of rollerblades. The movie ends as the three laugh it off, while poor Jerry is nowhere to be seen. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.